Hola, buenas tardes. How's everybody doing out there? I'm Sarco Guerrero and welcome to my studio. Come check it out. All right. Well, once again, here we are in my studio and uh, this little video is going to be the first in a series of videos that uh, Culture Coalition our nonprofit arts organization will be putting out uh, once a week through Instagram and through Facebook. So you're going to want to make sure you check them out. We're going to be visiting artists uh, from all over the valley. Uh, a lot of them you may know, some of them you may not know at all. And this will give you a chance to get familiar with uh, uh, all the wonderful, talented uh, artists out there in the valley. And uh, also give you a chance, me a chance, to go to their studio. And uh, this will be a wonderful opportunity because. Uh, you're just like me. I don't get the opportunity very often uh, to go visit artist studios just because I'm so busy in my own studio. But what I thought I'd do today is introduce you to some of the work I do. Um, you can call them different things. Uh, they are processional sculptures. People know a lot about the masks that I make. Uh, uh, less people know about the processional sculptures as this piece. This piece is called the Feathered Serpent, also known as Quetzalcoatl. Some people make the mistake of thinking it's a dragon, a Chinese dragon, because they, it is similar in many ways. It is a serpent, however, and not necessarily a dragon. It doesn't have wings, it doesn't have legs and claws and uh, antlers, but it's simply a serpent that is decorated, whose skin is made out of feathers. And why is that? We see depictions in, in uh, ancient Mexico all the way back uh, to the times of the Olmec, evidence of this idea, this image, this symbol, this metaphor of the feathered, what we call the feathered serpent, but when you translate it uh, correctly, it represents and means the precious serpent. Now, why is the serpent so precious in ancient Mexico and so symbolic and so full of meaning to literally all Native American cultures in North and South America. Well, a lot of people will tell you a lot of different things, but in ancient Mexico, amongst the Toltec Maya, the serpent was sacred. Why? Because the serpent was the ultimate teacher. Mankind, and in this case, the Toltec Maya, learned so much from the serpent simply by the geometrical patterns that are evident on the backs of some rattlesnakes. These patterns, in many cases, are mathematical equations. And through these designs, through these patterns, the ancient peoples of Mexico learned how to add, subtract, measure, do geometry, measure not only distance, but measure time as well. And as they learned these lessons from the schematic on the back of the serpent, they learned more about the seasons, the changes uh, of the seasons in our natural world, but they also learned about time and created the calendar. And when they created the calendar, they were able to create a consciousness, the knowledge about when to plant and when to sow, when to harvest. And it was in this way, because of what they learned from the serpent, that the ancient Toltec Maya were able to accomplish great things like Tenochtitlan, like Chichen Itza, like Palenque, all these great sites throughout the, uh, the American continent. So I wanted to express this idea. It's not a religion. It's more of a philosophy, more of a cosmic vision. We don't worship Quetzalcoatl as a god because Quetzalcoatl represents knowledge, ancient knowledge, power, the power of the mind and of the human spirit, and represents as well La Toltecayotl, the art of living well, the art of living in, in balance. So because this was the most prevalent symbol in ancient Mexico at that time called Anahuac, and so infused with meaning, evidently, throughout history, this concept, this idea was erased from our memories. And now we're rediscovering it, we're relearning it. 
So as an artist, my responsibility is to bring this ancient knowledge to life, these symbols, these images, and these important metaphors for us to interpret, once again, the world around us as our ancestors did at the time when they were able to live in harmony with nature in sustainable societies, in some cases, for 800 to over a thousand years. That means that we have a lot of important lessons to learn from our ancient Toltec heritage. So I depicted the serpent, uh, similarly as uh, depicted in some of the imagery of, of ancient Mexico, and created the serpent using uh, air conditioner ducts and to create this beautiful uh, cylindrical shape of the serpent. And then I found this material, this roughened material that kind of simulated the, the feathers of the serpent. And uh, this particular piece uh, is extremely important because he appears, he, she, doesn't really have a gender, remember that, it's both male and female duality. The serpent reappears at our celebrations of Dia de los Muertos, El Puente, Mask Alive, and all of our cultural celebrations. And what this does is when our dancers came, come out dancing with the serpent, we become once again in a similar state of consciousness as our ancestors. Why? Because we're starting to decolonize our mind and beginning to think the way they thought about how important it is for us today in this modern crazy world we live to become once again close to nature, in contact with the natural forces, and to live in harmony with those forces. The serpent, our teacher, representing the earth because it lives within the earth, it crawls upon it, and at the same time represents the sun, the power of a sun, because remember, the serpent is cold-blooded and it's solar powered. Think about it like that. Heaven and earth together in one. La, ser la serpiente emplumada que salcó aquí. The sacred serpent. So thank you for visiting my studio. The next time you come back, we're going to discover more things uh, about the work that I do. I'm going to tell you all about the Japanese no mask that I studied for many, many years in Japan. I'll talk about uh, my kukui masks that are a, a blending of Balinese, Mexican, and Japanese influences, and some of the other sculpture projects that I got going on, including the making of the Weiwet, the Aztec drums. So thank you for coming to my studio. Be sure to check out Culture Coalitions uh, and, and uh, Instagram, Culture Coalition, our organization that promotes the arts uh, here in the Valley. You're gonna be seeing a lot of us, so check it out. Muchas gracias, thank you very much. Tlaso Camate. I love watching.